Hi guys, in this video we'll be taking a look at my Starlog magazine collection. Going to be going through them one at a time, uh, just briefly looking at them, going through some of the major articles and seeing all the cool artwork and information on sci-fi of pretty much any era. And if you see any articles or even entire issues that you are really interested in, you'd like me to take a deeper look into, uh, even as far as reading the articles out loud, whatever, going through all the pictures, just let me know below if anyone's interested in any of these issues, I'll do a whole video on any one of them. I think that'll be a lot of fun here. Little Shop of Horrors, this is issue 113. Starman. This is a cool series they ran in a whole bunch of issues, the guest stars of Trek, where they show uh, and talk about different guest stars in episodes of the original Star Trek series. A whole lot with Little Shop of Horrors in this one, a whole bunch of stuff. And uh, Rat Boy, I never heard of this one. I read the article and I'm kind of interested to check this thing out. Moving on to issue 114. A lot dealing with Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home, or like my wife likes to call it, The Whales. Some Lost in Space. You'll see a lot of Lost in Space in these. Don Bluth. Oh man. In American Tale, this is one of my favorite kids' movies. I really like Don Bluth. I think sometimes, even with the Without the Disney budget, some of the Don Bluth movies actually surpass a lot of the Disney stuff at the same time. The Golden Child, a really bizarre Eddie Murphy movie. Uh, not one of his best, for sure. Kind of a weird one. Moving on to issue 115. in DeForest Kelly. It's actually a pretty, pretty interesting one there. And an ad on the back for Star Tours. The ultimate Disneyland thrill attraction from the imagination of George Lucas. The adventure is real. Moving on to 116. <clears throat> beautiful, beautiful shot of the Enterprise there. There's a lot of co coverage of uh, Star Trek IV. I feel like going through a lot of these, Star Trek IV got probably more coverage overall than any of the other movies at the time from that franchise. Some Doctor Who. They go into a lot of classic sci-fi along with the stuff that's very current from the time it came out. Uh, moving on to 117 Night Flyers. More deadly than aliens? Uh, I don't think so, but I do think it's a forgotten and underappreciated movie. Some Adam West Batman stuff here. And again, like I said earlier, I love how they give a lot of attention in some of these articles, in some of these uh, issues, to sci-fi books, and a lot of articles dealing with women writers, too, throughout these. But I love that, too, because that's such a huge part, I think, sometimes, uh, especially more modern sci-fi culture forgets to really think about the literature side of things, not just the movies and TV series. Moving on to the next issue, 118, a whole huge thing for the opening of Star Tours. Which is probably my favorite Disney ride, to be honest. Uh, oh, you'll recognize this one. Um, the, the one with uh, article Jeff Morrow from Mr. Science Theater 3000, the movie. It's the movie they ended up riffing for their feature film.
big Star Wars cover here for issue 120. And Spaceballs! I love Spaceballs. I, I remember hearing a rumor a few years ago they were going to do a Spaceballs 2 now that the new Star Wars movies came out, but I haven't heard anything about that since then. I don't know if that was just a, a rumor or something that might actually happen. There's a lot of coverage of the original Star Wars trilogy in these magazines. A lot. Uh, some really good stuff and some articles of some interesting information I haven't seen outside of these. And some pretty cool look. A lot of the... I love the uh, concept art and different things going on. And comparing that then to Spaceballs. And Inner Space in issue 121. And this article, this uh, issue is a pretty much a big mix of inner space and space balls for the most part. And then more James Bond on 122. I've always found it kind of interesting and odd that James Bond seems to be worked into a lot of the sci-fi uh, magazines and fandom of this time period. Robocop. There we go. The Masters of the Universe movie. This was 80s cheese at its best. Issue number 124, Star Trek The Next Generation. TV's new Star Trek. Some Gary Anderson stuff. I always found Gary Anderson stuff to be a little odd, to be honest. Uh, I've never really been in to get get into too much of it. Bridge, the Enterprise D. It's so fascinating to me, in particular, to see a lot of these early Star Trek: Next Generation articles throughout these are the perfect time period, uh, mid '80s to mid '90s. Because this is the Star Trek I really grew up with, was uh, the Enterprise D, Captain Picard, you know, the next generation. To, to be able to see that as being new is fantastic. The Running Man, Great Arnold Movie, Issue 125, The Princess Bride. Some cool V stuff here. Oh man, I want that V merchandise. That's awesome. That's, a, that's one of the things things that's really caught my attention looking through all these not just all the fascinating articles and great information but the merchandise oh man I wish I had that yeah, three men and a baby and for, for a second I'm like why is this in here oh that's right that's right Leonard Nimoy directed that some more stuff for running man on issue 127 Twilight Zone, one of the best sci-fi series ever. It's early next generation. This is really cool here. That's um, Ron Perlman as the Beast in the 80s TV series, uh, issue 128. Oh, John Delancey is Q. Fantastic character. Issue 129 here. Giant picture of Will Wheaton. I love this cover. <laughs> Will they kill off Denise Crosby? Will Tasha Yar survive the first season? Issue 130 here. I love seeing big stories like that and, and questioning things like that. Will they kill off Tasha Yar? Willow. A lot of cool Beetlejuice stuff. This is one of my, my one of my wife's favorite movies. Looks great, and I hope they do justice with the sequel that's coming out. Issue 131, a whole bunch more Willow coverage. A 
Willow's a great movie. I, I love Willow, but I think more people need to not just read the book of Willow, but even a lot of Willow fans, I feel like, don't realize that... Ooh, Critters 2, that's a good one. Don't realize that there are actually three sequels to Willow in book form, and they're fantastic. Oh, there we go, the demise of Tasha Yar. So I guess they did kill her. 132, got more Willow stuff throughout here. One thirty three, who framed Roger Rabbit? More who framed Roger Rabbit and issue one thirty four Curse of the Blob. I love this cover. This is probably one of my favorite covers out of all of these. Issue 135. Moving on to 137. E.T. comes to home video. Whew! It's just interesting being able to go back in time and see all these articles and read what people thought of things at the time and what they thought the future was going to be for some of these franchises and just amazing reads in each one of them. And that's what I said before, you know, again I'll say it, if you see any articles or even whole issues that you really want me to um, look more in depth into, maybe even like read some of the articles, let me know, I'll do a whole video on them. There's uh, one uh, late coming up later that's entirely, that's a huge thing with uh, the Batman movies, moving on here, my favorite Star Trek character. On 138, Worf, there's an issue later on that's um, dedicated entirely to, almost entirely to Blade Runner, all kinds of stuff. So I just very quickly going through a lot of these here, because there's a lot of them. Uh, 139, more Next Generation, Season 2. Look at Patrick Stewart there, he's a, he's a sexy beast. Doesn't even matter what he's doing. Just sitting there. The fly, too. Issue 141, The Adventures of Baron Munchausen. Dr. Pulaski, ugh. ugh. Worst thing to happen in the next generation. Ugh. Issue 142, exclusive Batman on location in Gotham City. Indiana Jones rides again. I love The Last Crusade. It's not my favorite Indiana Jones movie. Um, Raiders of the Lost Ark will always be my favorite, but I think this is the best one overall. I really have to say that. Great movie. Speaking of Indiana Jones, number 143, is this really his last crusade? I always thought there should have been more back then. I was always really surprised that it was only three. Uh, Ron Perlman, you guys need to go check this. If you missed this in the 80s or you're, you're too young to know about this one, this was actually a pretty interesting thing here with Ron Perlman as the Beast. The uh, first couple of seasons. Oh, the camera does not want to focus on Shatner's face. I don't blame it, but... <laughs> Issue, issue 144 here. Trying to focus on the chat. Right. One forty five, got a lot more Batman here and some stuff on Star Trek V. Ugh, what a disaster. Easily my least favorite Star Trek movie. 
Uh, unless you're counting the uh, Abrams reboot stuff. 152. Some good Alien Nation coverage starts in these articles here. Um, I really like Alien Nation. I think that it has sadly been forgotten. First time we meet the Ferengis. Moving on to 153, a whole lot of uh, Quantum Leap. And Kathy Frankel. Uh, for a bald alien, I always thought she was super hot. Always, always loved Kathy. Uh, one of my favorite sci-fi couples, actually. Alien Nation is a great, great series and, and series of TV movies. Sadly forgotten. Alright, 154, Gremlins 2, and some Ninja, Ninja Turtles coverage. Um, more with uh, Beauty and the Beast. Some Back to the Future stuff. There we go, there's, there's a real April O'Neil. They did a great job in those first movies. Some more Back to the Future in 155. And Back to the Future 3, I honestly have never been a fan of that one. I just have never liked it. Dark Man on the cover of 158. Oh, here we go. I've always been a big fan of Total Recall. Conceded that a divorce. <laughs> such such a good movie. Oh, I, was, I love that. I love 80s Arnold. The Flash and the fastest man alive win the ratings race. Uh, no, he cannot. And Guinan. Whoopi Goldberg will always be guining to me. Every time I see her, I can't call her Whoopi Goldberg. She's just she's guining to me. Number one sixty one here. One sixty two with Jordy on the front there. Lavar Burton is such a huge part of my childhood. Between reading Rainbow and Captain Planet and being Geordi, I mean, he's always around. 163. Ugh. Does anyone actually remember this? Harry and the Hendersons? What a terrible, terrible show. I apologize to anyone who actually likes even the concept of that, but ugh. Some more Lost in Space. Ninja Turtles 2. Yes. And Never Ending Story 2 is also in this art in, in this uh, issue. It's uh, an amazing sequel with uh, Ninja Turtles 2 and a not so great sequel with Never Ending Story 2. Uh, it was it was still good, but you can't compare it to the first Never Ending Story. I miss those movies. They just do not make kids' movies the way they used to in the 80s. They don't treat kids the same way. Turtle rap. Now everything's so sugar-coated and awful for kids. But Mom and Dad Save the World. I'd never heard of this one before, before reading this. Uh, Starlog 167. The stuff with Suburban Commando in there, that's kind of funny. Sixty-eight, Terminator 2, Judgment Day. This is really cool. This is a big fold-out of all the covers for the fifth, first uh, 15 years of Starlog. That's uh, really cool. Look at that chess set. That is amazing. That's what I was talking about earlier. There's just there's so much memorabilia and stuff in these. That is just oh, I wish I could grab some of that. 169. 170. Some Bill and Ted and some of the Back to the Future 3. And Brent Spiner. 
Data is such a good character until they decide to really milk him in some of the later Next Generation movies. I'd rather be known like as a Spiner Femme. I like that. Tarzan, an ape man for the 90s. Tarzan swings onto TV and won't be around for long. There's some good stuff in this one with uh, Blake Seven, if you've ever seen that. Uh, along with Star Trek, of course. There's something Star Trek in just about every issue, if not every issue. <laughs> so, number 173 Classic Trek, Next Generation, and Star Trek VI. This is a really cool article, the sci-fi TV you didn't see, looking at a lot of unsold, old uh, sci-fi TV pilots. Really fascinating. I love stuff like this. It's, it's cool to think of, like this, in a way, for a time, this was your internet, this was your fandom, this took the place of, you know, message boards and news, things like that. Hook, one of the, one of the best kids movies ever, I think, I, I really like that. So sad that Robin Williams is gone. Captain Sulu. Oh my. 175. Is this the end? I love that the premise of almost half of this issue talking about not just Star Trek VI and what Star Trek has meant to everyone over the decades, but uh, talking about the creation of Star Trek and will this be the end as far as the original cast is concerned. Seventy-six. A little bit of space, nineteen ninety-nine. One seventy-eight. Batman Returns. And some stuff on Young Indiana Jones. Uh, honey, I blew up the kid. I, I miss uh, Rick Moranis. He was great, and it's so sad why he left movies. He was such a fantastic part of the 80s. Uh, cool World, which I thought looked cool when I was little, and it was awful, though. Even as a kid, I didn't like it. Uh, number 235. Some stuff on Babylon 5 in here, but this is the coolest thing right here. Uh, talking about designing the Enterprise E for uh, Star Trek First Contact. Easily the best uh, Next Generation movie. They kind of went downhill after this one. 179. Yeah, that 235 one kind of snuck in there. Uh, this is really cool if you're a Batman fan. If you are a fan of the 80s Batman movies, check this out. And this is what I mean about a lot of the just amazing just images in these magazines, looking at a lot of just the concept art, old behind-the-scenes photos you don't get to see anymore, articles looking into uh, different things as they were coming out. It, it's a, such a different perspective than looking back in time at things. Uh, and, you know, seeing things in hindsight, seeing things as they were occurring is so just so different, and being able to get a window into that is fascinating. So, more Batman here with 180. And this is a cool article about Godzilla movies. So there's a wide range of topics, if you're into just about anything, this, uh, even related to, to sci-fi in any way, these are great, great articles in here. Starlog is great. Isaac Asimov, one of my favorite writers ever. Great stuff. A whole lot in this one, number 146, about the Joker.
the Sci-Fi Channel launches. I remember when the Sci-Fi Channel was getting started and uh, oh man, I loved the old Sci-Fi Channel and then now they're awful. Now the, the S-Y-F-Y Sci-Fi. Here we go, Blade Runner, issue 184. Uh, this is one in particular that I might even just go back myself and look through uh, in video form for you guys. There are about three or four here that, even if no one uh, says specifically they really want to see them, that I'll probably go back and look at anyway and read a few articles and just show you guys a little bit more in detail. So, Because there's just a couple here that are really, really fantastic. I really like Blade Runner. I like collecting different versions of the movie. Uh, if you see any of my uh, CD stuff coming up here, I'm really looking for Blade Runner on CD. So <laughs> if you know anyone who has that, let me know. It's hard to find. Moving on here, Highlander with uh, issue 185. The first Highlander movie is pretty much the only one I ever really enjoyed. Um, after that, I just never really get into anything with Highlander. I like the first movie, that's about it. One eighty six, more uh, Patrick Stewart being amazing. A big article on Jadzia. This is a. Uh, Getting into the start of Deep Space Nine, for me, hands down, the greatest show ever to grace a television screen, The Worlds of Star Trek. <laughs> the Last Action Hero, issue uh, 192. That was a good one. I, I remember when I saw it for the first time, I didn't realize going into it as a kid that it was supposed to be... Uh, a bit of a spoof on the 80s action hero tropes and just being a little blindsided by that but in hindsight it's actually a really funny movie that's the stuff on the Mario Brothers movie oh, what a terrible disaster that is I used to have every single one of these toys <laughs> these old next generation ones great now, I've never understood why like, people like uh, the Coneheads I don't know <laughs> that's one thing my wife and I can agree on issue 194 I know her dad loves them, thinks they're funny, a lot of people like them, but uh, I just have never really, even as a kid, thought they were very funny. This is a really cool one. This is one of those other ones that I might go back and uh, show you guys, even if no one asks for it. <laughs> uh, issue 195. Readers choose the 25 best Next Generation episodes. I mean, that's that's really cool. Demolition Man, issue 196 here. The Nightmare Before Christmas, 197. That is probably my favorite Christmas movie ever. I, I watch that just about every Christmas. Issue 199, William Shatner's Tech War. I've read the Tech War uh, book, at least one of the books, and I've seen the original movie. I've never seen the series. I don't know if it's any good or not. I know it didn't last very long, but uh, if anyone has actually seen that, let me know. Uh, good article here on Kira one of my favorite characters ever from Deep Space Nine. The 200th special. It's a really cool issue, obviously. Issue number 200. And as a really big article here, that's this is a really cool one. Uh, the 200 most important people of sci-fi and fantasy. Really cool. And then this one, uh, 201, more RoboCop. Getting into talking about the RoboCop uh, TV show a bit. The X-Files and Sequest in here. I feel like no one remembers Sequest. <laughs> Some Babylon 5, getting into real 90s stuff here. Slowly moving out a lot of the 80s stuff. The X-Files. X-Files 
such a good series. I didn't. I don't think I appreciated it enough when it was first on, but those first four or five seasons are some of the best TV ever made. A lot on the Twilight Zone and a, a really late Rod Sterling interview, which is cool in here. Too. Cool thing about this is getting into some Hercules and Xena. Some of the best 90s TV, especially Xena. I mean, they knocked it out of the park with that. And I don't think we'll ever see anything quite like them ever again. I think that's... It's so incredibly 90s. Like, it's really based in how television was at the time that I just don't think we'll ever see anything quite like it. This is interesting because... Something like a quarter of this one, reading through it quickly, is actually dedicated to Rebel Assault 2. So there is even some early video game stuff in here. Uh, not a whole lot, usually only if it's dedicated to something that's already an existing sci-fi franchise of some form, but there's some cool stuff in here. Uh, issue 225. So Mystery Science Theater 3000. I'm talking about the the movie. And a nice article here about um, oh uh, sliders. This is really cool. Another series that didn't last too long and fell apart after a few seasons. And talking about some of the visual effects of Hercules' legendary journeys and getting into a little bit of Xena here. This is a nice one. 226 on the sets behind Deep Space Nine and Voyager. 90s was a, a golden decade for Star Trek fans. Reruns in the last couple movies of the, next, of the original series, you know, Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, Voyager, just constant, constant Star Trek all the time. Phantom, issue 227. There's a pretty decent issue on the Phantom here. Twenty years of science fiction, their 20th anniversary issue here, 228. Which is a, it's a double-sized issue, so that's a whole lot. Uh, this one celebrating Independence Day, two twenty-nine. A movie that I don't understand why it got a sequel. Uh, very much a hit of the times. It feels like it didn't really need a sequel. Uh, issue two thirty-eight. Some good Star Wars stuff in here, and talking a lot about Mark Hamill, and even a little bit with the Joker. Uh, then moving on to 237 here. George Lucas uh, talking a lot about changes he made to the Star Wars saga. Kind of writing as he went, the uh, sibling thing coming out of what was supposed to be a romance. Uh, getting into a lot with Xena. Uh, this is when Xena was slowly but surely taking over Hercules here, issue 238. Uh, Hercules is a great, great series, but the spin-off surpassed it within a couple of years. And the horrible Disney Hercules. Batman and Robin, ugh. Issue number 239. What an awful cover. Dealing with an awful movie. Issue 182 here. This one slipped out of place in the pile here. Um, a lot talking about Babylon 5 and Universal Soldier takes up a big part of this one. And issue 240, the last one that I have here, has a little bit of everything in here. Star Trek fan magazines. Each series had their own actual magazine, along with the official Star Trek magazine, which is all of them. And Contact. Contact is a really good movie. I enjoyed it back in the day. I enjoy it a little bit less now after seeing Arrival. If you haven't seen that, go check it out. I really love that one. Uh, my wife and I really enjoyed it. 
Uh, I definitely think it's one of the best First Contact movies ever. And Men in Black. The first one I loved as a kid, I still like it today. Uh, after that though, meh. And that's it guys, just a quick look at my Starlog collection. Again, just wanted to go through all of them quickly and it still is going to be over a half hour video, I'm sure. Uh, but like I said, if there are any issues, I tried to remember to say the issue number whenever I could, but either that or a timestamp, whatever, let me know if there's any issues that you want to look at a little more closely or any articles individually. And um, as I said before, there are a couple that I'll do that with anyway, just because I think they're super fascinating. But thanks for hanging in there this long and checking all these out. Uh, just a cool window into the past.